Sports. Here it all comes, the good, the bad, the ridiculous. The naked truth about OzFest, uncensored. Back in the early 90s, before OzFest arrived to save the world, there was Lollapalooza, a traveling alternafest much beloved by well-mannered college kids wanting to get down, but not all that hospitable to aging metal gods. Ozzy was still selling great amounts of records and, you know, doing his thing, but we've never really been in, but especially so during um, the Seattle, you know, era. It's like one of those nauseating trends that go on in the music industry. My wife tried to get me on Lollapalooza. I called up for Ozzy to go on Lollapalooza and it was like, excuse me, you must be joking. And it was like, no, I'm not joking. And they were like, well, he doesn't fit. And they turn around to show him, they said, well, you know what, there's no place for Ozzy. Oh no, there's no space for him, not his type of music. As soon as I put the phone down from the Lollapalooza people, I'm like, right, right, f*** you, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the Oz face. Please show him, before you go blazing a trail, let's, let's test the waters. It was a big risk, a big financial risk, and also more than the finances, it was like, okay, if this doesn't work, how am I going to get the egg off my face? All I say to Sharon is, please don't get some suck band that's like a folk singer up there with a one leg and a plastic ear or something. Give them value for money. So that year we did Los Angeles and Phoenix, and everybody was like, what was that? We start hearing ticket sales. I'm like, wow, dude, these ticket sales are like, pretty big. And so we sent Abby Kears. And we're here in San Antonio, Texas for the Oz Fest. Yeah! Oh, kicked ass! She had an amazing time. And she just came back saying, this is the tour. People are going crazy. Oz, bring it on, baby! Woo! All right, this is rock and roll. That first OzFest set the blueprint for all the OzFest to come and launched a school of hard rock for the Osborne kids who tagged along with their doting folks on every tour. I've seen them grow up so much and it's kind of sad because it's like blink of an eye and they're like, you know, the young adults and I don't like it. My brother was friends with all the bags and I was, and I would just tag along with him. Keep on rolling, baby. <laughs> One year we had Jack give us a tour of the Osbournes. And with me is uh, Mr. Jack Osborne. Being 12 and seeing Cutload every day on MTV, I'm like, woo, Cutload! His voice hadn't even broken. So now we're here, we're just moving down at the signing stuff of the show. Sleep nuts on this bus. Dad, my balls are dropped. He's just a nice little boy, and now he's a great big lolloping, sucking monster. <laughs> And he's grown into the resident expert on up-and-coming OzFest-worthy bands. Rumor on the Farm is that you are instrumental in putting together the whole OzFest spectacular. It's like Jack's show. Everyone knows Jack, everybody loves Jack. He's the man behind the scenes. I really didn't start getting involved until, until about OzFest 99. I think it was just such a cool thing of a mom to do, to like have her son have so much involvement at such a young age. Well, actually, my mom, she comes to me. She gives me a whole bunch of CDs. I listen to them all. She uh, tells me which one she thinks. Jack, I use as my barometer, and it's, it just works great. That's his world. It's not my world. It's so hard for little, like, unsigned bands to do it. Every new band wants to get on OzFest. We didn't know what we were doing. It was our first major tour. We didn't even have an album out. We did it for free. You want to help as many new bands as you can, but, you know, you have to be selective. It's kind of like a, a, a tradition throughout my career that m most bands that I've ever played with have got, gone on to do greater things. To come back on, in 2001, be asked to, like, kind of co-headline, I mean, it was a dream come true. It was really cool. It's probably a good thing that Jack Osborne developed into the OzFest A&R prodigy rather than, say, Sister Kelly. Are you still a Hanson fan? <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, no, no. You were, though. I was a big Hanson fan. What happened? What went wrong? 
I grew up. I was a little teeny popper. So what are you listening to now? And sing. What? Like now you know. Sink. I never liked him. Sink. Liar. Yes, you didn't. She's like, oh, I didn't. Yeah, right, Kelly. You now I used to trail you all over the country to get you into their show. <laughs> Now, of course, it's mainly a matter of making sure Dad gets to the show. You know how you know how sometimes you just wake up and you're like, I don't want to go into work today. I'm not going to go. I'm going to call in sick. The thing about doing the Oscars, if I get sick, I've got to go in there sick. I think I've got the, 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 the cold or something. So we're sitting on the runway and my dad's like, I'm not going. And we're like, no, you have to. There's, you know, 30,000 people there and they'll go mental if you don't call them. I'm not going. I, I can't hide you behind a guitar. Or, I mean, I got a microphone thing and I'm singing like a complete d We call, we say, you know, play the show, don't tell anyone until Mansa gets done. And then say, you know, regret to inform you, Ozzy Osbourne will not perform this evening. When the, um, one of the band members announced that Ozzy wasn't here, the guys ran to the fence and started tearing it down. They knocked down an 18-foot wooden wall. The police will have their right gear on, ready to go in. They were just trashing the place because everybody's angry. We need our money back because we didn't get our concert. It's not because they're a wild, you know, head-banging crowd. It's because whenever you bring thousands of people together in the sun in the middle of summer, accidents happen. You know, same thing could happen at a Britney Spears concert. Coming up next on OzFest Uncensored, Marilyn Manson offers up the ultimate crazed fan souvenir. The whole time he's doing the interview, he's bleeding from his All right, you people at OzFest are getting the inside. You're getting the worst. I'm getting ready to take you straight to the sewer. The 1998 OzFest tour provided the first major showcase for a rising Florida band called Limp Biscuit. I didn't even know who Limp Biscuit was until I saw them on OzFest in their toilet. I just, I didn't care, I didn't know. It was a weird period of time, right before rap metal got big. Get the f up! They'd never done any big venues. They hadn't played sheds. This is definitely the debut of the toilet. What brought the toilet up in the first place? You're thinking stage props. How about a big toilet? I have a couple bowel movements up on stage and flush a couple of our most popular celebrities in the music business right now. It's like Ozzy's catchphrase, you know. I don't give a f you could set yourselves on fire because when the band, whatever band it is, is on that stage, that stage is theirs. During the, that show, like, random things would, like, come out of it. He could have dressed up as a tampon right. and gone on, I don't care. That would have been perfect to come out as a big, used tampon, don't you think? Or better yet, come out the way snot frontman Lynn Strait did. Probably the toilet got uh, most famous because of Lynn Strait, the guy from Snot, Ospest 98. It's Lynn from Snot, all right? He was a very, very funny guy. He was so naughty. Do I have to get naked people for you to remember my name? I was out there watching Lynn Biscuit, and I was checking it out and I see I see this head on top of a head walking up the stairs and I'm like wow he's naked and just in a pair of sandals and socks. It was Fred Durst daring me to do something and I He's at the root of everything. He is. He came out of the toilet totally naked. Has it all come up on that bare ass naked? And he's all oh yeah the police saw and they were looking for him. And he got chased off stage by the cops who ran and ran into my dad's dressing room. And that was a complete complete accident. He knew that nobody would get him if he was in Ozzy's dressing room. You know, security guards or cops just, you know, they don't want to go in there and they're just not allowed. So. I found the first door and I opened it up and Sharon Osbourne standing there laughing hysterically. <laughs> he came into my dressing room, stark naked. And her little youngest daughter is just coming out of the bathroom. What's going on? She says, I'm taking a piss and he walks in. Mommy, there's a man in here naked. I'm naked and I need to use your bathroom. Hey, dude, can I hide the Go on, Lena. Sharon, I've never met you before. I'd love to meet you under better circumstances, but if I don't run out the back right now, I'm going to get arrested. I'm throwing stage clothes at him. <laughs> Ozzy's to put on anything. We snuck him out the back door and pretended like he wasn't in there, and the police like, lost him, but he ended up getting arrested. The naked trick worked. I told them all, and they said it wouldn't work, but the naked thing works. Yeah. Naked was nothing new for Marilyn Manson, who lived up to every bit of his controversial reputation on both of his OzFest outings. 1997 was the year of Marilyn Manson. He was getting protests everywhere he went. It seemed like every show they were trying to 
stop the show. He has no morals and he's spreading it to young people. He was the Antichrist. Not only was Marilyn Manson in jeopardy, but also rock music in general and, and the Constitution of the United States. As a Christian, I also have the right to say, no, I don't want him here. If they're going to promote evil here, we're going to lift Jesus higher. Why do people think that kids are stupid? They're not stupid. They know what they're buying a ticket for. They knew they weren't going to see the Dixie Chicks. There always has to be the one person where people can look at and be like, oh my God, look what he's done, look what he says in his lyrics. Right now it's Eminem, it was Manson. In the 80s it was my dad. Marilyn Manson is an artist like anybody else. He's not satanic, he's a, bit, he's a bit extreme, but he's a really nice friend, he's a good friend of mine. So we went to the OzFest show and then we also went and we interviewed the president of his fan club. What we did was we took that president of the fan club to OzFest that year. How are you feeling about meeting Manson today? I'm pretty excited, I'm a little nervous. Part of his shtick on stage was to cut himself, and he came right backstage and sat down to do an interview with us. And the whole time he's doing the interview, he's bleeding from his nipple. And uh, as soon as the interview ends, he looks at himself. He went and he got those brown paper towels to, uh, to wipe himself up. And they had a little meeting and uh, Manson split out of there. Are we all done? Yeah. Okay. So much. Maybe see the doctor. And when he split out of there, I saw her uh, reach over onto the counter and pick up these bloody paper towels and keep them for herself. <laughs> Even though Marilyn Manson getting into trouble is about as rare as a cop in a donut factory, the wiry rock star is in hot water again. It's good to be back in Florida! OzFest 2001, Manson got accused of putting his scrote on some guy's head. I guess there were charges pressed against him. He didn't rub his crotch, it was like he pulled his d*** out and put it on some guy. He wears a thong on stage and you know, sometimes... It'll pop out. He must have had an awful long willy to get from the stage to the security guy's neck. You're a security guard at the OzFest? It's probably the best thing that happened to you all day, for God's sakes. It's a waste of everybody's time and effort. Manson's crotch attack lawsuit was eventually settled out of court for $4,000. Less lucky in every way was another act that couldn't even get its act together. One, two! Crazy Town! I hated Crazy Town, and I was afraid to say it because I figured, you know, tour camaraderie I got down there. Everybody on that tour hated Crazy Town, which was awesome. They should have known by now that he just don't stop. Feel like that rock hip hop to make me grab my pride. Crazy Town was one of those bands before they had that Butterfly song who was on uh, the second stage of OzFest in uh, 2000. And they were very naughty boys. We had heard early in the tour that they had been kicked off for some reason. One of the guys in the band had like taken some drugs or whatever and had a breakdown. We're on OzFest, you know, we had to go home, all kinds of madness you know, happened. Relapses, break up with the girlfriends. They were with us for five shows, but they didn't make the five shows. I think they only did three out of the five that they stayed for. Despite that fiasco, Crazy Town was back on the OzFest bill the following year to the delight of, well, nobody. So then OzFest 2001 comes around and they're just like, we need a tour, and we're like, uh, crazy town, you know, butterfly, wow. So it was kind of, yeah. Poor crazy town, you know, they got put on pop radio and played to death. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady. Butterfly. And every little girl's going, come, my lady, come, come, my lady. You always have to have a band for the ladies. You have to pay to get on OzFest sometimes, and I'm not, I said sometimes, so, yeah, you know, take it from there. And, um, they didn't work at all on the bill. What's up with everybody in the back? What's up with the people on the lawn? On the lawn! Make some How noise. you doing out there? And the Ozfest crowd's going, beer drinking, bellied, mulleted, Hessians didn't really take to that too well and proceeded to booing them off stage. They got the sh kicked out of them, but I must say they stuck with it. And they, they ate so much sh on that tour, they really did. Coming up next, a look back at the history of OzFest and a look ahead to its possible future. OzFest on Sunday. Who are you here to see? Oh man, all of them. <laughs> Begging mercy for the Southern Sea. Satan left his 
It is all about the music because there is no other tour like that. <laughs> There's so many bands I've liked. You know, we said we want to do ours first. I'm glad that we were given bands that would not normally have a roster to play their music. When I get up and I look in the mirror and I got a bunch of lumps on my head, I did had a good day. Despite all the major acts on the Ozfest tours, the biggest star at every stop is inevitably the audience. Our crowd has gotten younger and younger as each year goes by. I like Ozzy. And you also get a lot of girls, which is great. I think you got a, a, a wide variety of ladies at the Ozfest shows. When we first started, it was only about, I would say, about 10% women. But it's been getting more and more every year. A lot of them feel obligated to paint their boobies there. Not in North Carolina venue, there wasn't a lot of, a lot of females there. I think there was too many mullets. Mullets? You say, what's a mullet? Well, this is going to get ugly because we had the guys in Incubus rooting out the mullet impaired on Ozfest 2000. We had a very uh, sinister plan to go outside into the crowd and see if we can cut ourselves a mullet. In 2000, we did a whole half-hour show called All Access Ozfest. So basically, the mullet is short on top, on the sides, and long and feathery in the back. So we decided spontaneously to go out and find the mullets of Ozfest. It was just myself and uh, Brandon Boyd and Dirt Lance. Oh, look at this one right here. Oh, dude, he kick our ass, dude. I say my whole damn hand right now. They found this one guy who was wasted. They found this other guy. At first, it looked like he wasn't really into that. Would you be willing to cut your hair on MTV? The guys in Incubus were so excited about it. Can we hear it for Eric? Come on! Yeah. They, they definitely liked the piece. Awesome. Awesome. And I guess when it got on the air, Incubus, they were just a bit underwhelmed, the fact that it was only a minute long. And so hopefully Uncensored will air the true extended form of the mullet piece. Maybe you can find the occasional mullet at an Ozfest show, but trying to find a Backstreet Boys fan could get you in some nasty trouble. Ian Robinson knows because he tried. Well, this is another MTV slapdown. A lot of us around here at MTV News, we figured that Ozfest was by far the biggest story of the summer. And they sent me down there. Hey, what's up? This is Ian with MTV News. We are down here in lovely West Palm Beach, Florida. As I was leaving, they're like, oh, one big thing. AJ from the Backstreet Boys had just entered rehab. I'm going to be late tonight, so don't stay up and wait for me, OK? Here are the dumb questions. Um, uh, we want to find out from like the hard drinking rockers, you know, um, what they think about it. Recently, AJ from the Backstreet Boys went into rehab for alcoholism. <laughs> Which guy is AJ? Which one? He's the guy that always finishes the songs. And we're obviously freaking out because we would feel that they would laugh at us. Any reaction? Yes, we have. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I hadn't been on the channel that long. Nobody knew who I was. I was going down to talk to some bands that I actually really liked and respected. <laughs> nice. And the first words out of my mouth are going to be like, so the Backstreet Boys, one of them is a drunk. They really wanted you to ask that question? You're lucky you're here. Why are you asking us about boy bands? He needs to rehabilitate himself from singing like a p is what he needs to rehab. OK, so I'm good. <laughs> I don't know what I know. I'm just, I just speak right. on camera. I'm just a trained dog. I almost feel bad for the guy, you know? And, and, he, and his hairline isn't real strong either. So. <laughs> Dave, check me out. Here, my dance is coming, you know? And then all of a sudden, you know, he's a booze hound and he's stuck in some rehab somewhere. It's like, dude, I figure it out. And those pieces never made the air, ever. I was used to that. They were like, here's something humiliating to do that we probably won't use. So, uh, then the rest of the questions Wrong question. Pointless. Where will the Ozfest go next? Is there still a future for this long running road show? Well, that, it seems, is pretty much up to the fans. <laughs> Every, everything's got to have its 15 minutes. And I guess all fans is, is going to try and have its 15 years. When the kids don't come, we'll go home. That's it.
I'm still Ozzy, the, the rock and roll. Rock and roll is, is my first love, and you know, it's my last love. Metal. Thanks. Somehow I got some tickets here, or somehow I ended up here. But hey, it's going to be a great show, right? I'm here to see anybody that rock and f roll, dude. Who are you here to see? You. Because it's concert of century. <laughs> Just like jumping some pits, getting messed up, you know what I mean? Ozzy Osbourne is a king! Ah! Or ah, as he's now known as Z.